The Kármán vortex sheet is an interesting aspect of fluid mechanics that gives rise to some really uh, cool looking patterns, but it's also something that can have some useful applications. So here's a picture from space of a place uh, off the coast of Baja, California, which is right here. And here's uh, uh, what's called the Carmen Vortex Street um, being shed off of this island. There's a vortex here, and then another one, and another one, and so on. And the same pattern shows up in flumes. Um, this is a, a, a experimental apparatus, a, a flume. This is an obstruction. The flow is going from left to right. And these are small bubbles that are put in the flume to mark the water. And you can see the um, these eddies that are being shed. Um, and basically what's happening is there's a eddy that's shed off of one side and then another one is shed off of the other side and it gives this alternating pattern of swirls. Here's another shot from a different um, experimental apparatus and then um, all of these are flows past an obstruction but a similar kind of effect occurs where you have a, an obstruction moving through the flow. So the fluid is relatively stationary and we have here a moving object and we see in the wake of this jet these vortices that have been shed off of the jet. Okay, so um, what I want to do is take this interesting phenomena and uh, use it for a useful application. And the application will be a device called the Vortex Shedding Flow Meter. And this is something that you can go out and buy. And it uses this process of shedding vortices to measure the flow rate uh, in, a, in, in a pipe. And basically, here's how it works. The, um, the, as the vortices are shed, alternating one side then the other, the f that causes a pressure fluctuation and the frequency of that pressure fluctuation is proportional to the flow rate. Okay, so if that's true then what you could do is measure the pressure behind the obstruction. It will fluctuate, it'll vary with time periodically. You could determine the flow rate and then correlate that to the flow rate, correlate the frequency of the pressure fluctuation to the flow rate. And if this process were to, to work, then you should have a, a good correlation. And that's, that, that's essentially how a vortex shedding flow meter um, works. So I guess what I want to do is imagine that you had an idea for a vortex shedding flow meter and you wanted to evaluate it. Well, you could make an experiment and make up an apparatus that would be expensive and take a long time. Or you could do a simple simulation to check out the idea first. Ultimately, you would have to do the experiment, but if you could do the simulation and get some good results, then that would be a strong encouragement to move ahead. So let's take a look and see how we could do So here's a model geometry, and the flow will be from left to right, and here's the obstruction that will create the vortices. So there's a parameter called u-mean, the mean velocity, and we'll also calculate the Reynolds number. Um, I also would like to show you this feature of the analysis. This is a little bit different than what we've done in the past. This is a function that's a step function. And this is something that you can uh, select. It's right there. So you put this step function in. And the step function will go from 0 to 1 uh, at point 1. And it has a transition over this width. So if we plot it up, it looks like this. and what I'm going to do then is use this step function to um, start the velocity of the flow up gradually. This will be a transient analysis and if we go here to the inlet boundary condition uh, I take the mean velocity and multiply it by this step function 
step one there's the name step one and it's a function of time t and this is just giving the units to get the units to work out right that one over s it's not really necessary so step one as a function of time that causes the velocity to ramp up at the um, beginning of the analysis and you'll find that that kind of ramping uh, helps to get the um, uh, transient analysis going. If you started to, if you started the velocity at u mean right from the beginning of the analysis, then you often have um, stability problems. Okay, so the setup of this analysis is really pretty similar to problems you're familiar with. Um, you can go through and check it out, but I think you've seen all of this stuff before. The thing that I want to show you here that I, I perhaps you have not seen before if you go to study here's the time dependent study so this is a function of time and what I want to do this time th this analysis takes a minute or a few minutes to run and so I want to get the results while it's r while it's solving and I'll go and uh, check this the plot and this plot is the one that's called velocity if I go down here there's the velocity plot and so by checking that what I'm gonna do is be able to see this plot take shape as the solution is determined then it'll it will be able to see it I also have this thing here called probes and if I go up to definition we see that I've got a boundary pro point probe and I got that by right click clicking and going to um, uh, probes right there and there's boundary point probe so I inserted that and got this guy and I put in a point at that location just XY coordinates and then I said well what I want to plot at that point is the log base 10 of the pressure and uh, yeah that's that's so this thing right here will get plotted as we go by um, selecting this feature right here under this place in the study okay so that's I think really all there is to it let's go and uh, start running this and so it gets going and right here now you can see right from the beginning we have some results that were uh, that are showing up and this is the uh, velocity as the velocity is ramping up with time we can see here the velocity structure is starting to take shape um, we've got high velocity on either side of this circle a low velocity wake and right at the beginning things are kind of stable although we start to see some oscillations taking place um, but they're really not the full developed fully developed uh, vortex street yet that takes a bit of time to develop but actually you can start to see it now here are these um, eddies these oscillations right here and um, being shed downstream from this obstruction so we can also measure the pressure uh, at the probe point and actually we just had some uh, some marker spheres released and you can see how there's a complex flow pattern causing these points these these uh, markers that have been released at the same time in a, in a line to become uh, mixed up so that's a help to visualize the flow now let's go and look at the point probe so you can see that we're just a little over half of the analysis through but um, we're interested in the periodicity and seeing how the pressure fluctuates so this is a plot of the pressure at that point that we selected and you can see we're starting to get some periodicity so uh, in fact this is seems pretty 
periodic, it seems like the, um, the periodicity is kind of stabilized. So what I'm going to do is see if I can just figure it out from these data. So there's one, two, three. That's, that's about what it, that's at about 4.3 seconds and that's about 3.2 seconds. So there's four cycles, one, one, two, well, let's see, one, two, three cycles over about 1.2 seconds. So we can calculate the cycles per second. We could count more of these. We have uh, one, two, three, four, five. There's six cycles in about 2.4 seconds. So we could calculate that frequency for the velocity that we're using and that's really what we're after. We don't really have to run this all the way out so I would write that down and determine the frequency. Let's take a look at the graphics one more time. So here we can see these um, oscillations. I have a fairly coarse grid on this so that's perhaps why the um, the structure of this is not as refined as some of those other simulations. Okay, so what we can do now is stop this and then to evaluate whether this would make a good flow meter, we have the um, frequency for a flow of one meter per second. So I can just simply change this and run it again. And we have the same kind of development of the flow. We get these uh, these bands on either side of the obstruction of high velocity and it starts to move downstream with time. We get the higher velocity in the center and the low velocity boundary layer. The initial flow is fairly straight, but then these Kármán vortices start to develop. So this higher flow, we can see them develop. They look slightly different than they did at a lower flow rate. We can go up here to the pressure and we see this beginning pulse. This is where the flow starts up and then the vortices really take some time I guess a second or a second and a half to to develop but now we can see this periodic effect develop and so the periodic nature is starting to express itself and we can go in and measure the frequency again so we've got um, let's see there's one two three four cycles in um, in that would be I guess about 0.9 seconds something like that. Um, we could of course save this and print it out and do the analysis of the frequency more accurately um, but what I'd like you to do is just go and and use this printout to get a quick assessment of what the frequency is and remember the frequency units are in cycles where there's one cycle and two cycles and cycles per second would be the units of, of frequency. So we should have enough data here to get the frequency and we can just terminate the analysis and run it again um, and get several more measures of the frequency as a function of the velocity. And so we've also seen that Reynolds number is an important aspect of fluid flow problems. We set up the Reynolds number up here as a definition and so we can plot the Reynolds number by going here to derive values, uh, point evaluation, and then the Reynolds number is evaluated for essentially for the whole model. 
Um, and in this case, the Reynolds number is calculated using the diameter of this circle as the characteristic length. And that's the expression that I wrote up there in the definition. So I just selected a point here. Um, I'm doing a point evaluation, so I have to have a point. I selected that one, and then type in what I want to evaluate there. That's the variable name. And then I select evaluate. And there's the Reynolds number at that point. So that's a convenient way to get the Reynolds number. Also, by the way, this point probe that we selected up here and set up, we saw the plot here. But we can also get tabulated values under the derived values. Here are the tabulated values. And we could cut those and paste those um, out into a file and use those later.